Welcome back everybody, this is Jeremy at Hills Machine Works and we are in a video series tearing down, cleaning, inspecting, and rebuilding a Honda 200cc air-cooled engine. This one came out of a 200E Big Red. It's also found in the 200ES from 1984, some of the early 4Trax models, and quite a few other ATC and early Honda applications. If you haven't seen the first two videos, you want to go back and check those out. Video number one, removed the camshaft outside here. Video number two, we pulled the cylinder head cover off, completely cleaned that, inspected the rocker arms and shafts, and now it's time to get the cylinder head itself off and inspected. Before we do that though, we're gonna put the cylinder head cover back on, and I'm gonna torque these down to 22 foot-pounds. We're then gonna check two things on the head before we break it down any further. Before I started this video, I brought these to probably 15 foot-pounds or so. I don't believe in going right to the maximum torque. You should always build up your torque values. Make sure you go in a cross pattern. Okay. And we're just gonna suck these down. They don't need to be torqued down. What we're concerned with right now is we want to check the camshaft bearing ID, this one right here. And in order to do that properly, you've got to have a clean cylinder head cover. The cylinder head itself has to be clean near the top, which it was. And then you have to torque it down. You can use a dial bore gauge. If you don't have a dial bore gauge, you can use telescoping gauges for this one. So let's get a good reading on this and we're going to compare it to the book. What I've got for a reading here is one inch, 338 thousandths and eight ten thousandths. You can see that the tolerance given by Honda is one inch, 337 thousandths and eight tenths to one inch, 341 thousandths and five tenths. We are one thousandths above the lower standard limit. So we've had about one thousandths of wear in there. Nothing appreciable. This thing is ready to go. Let's check the second item we need to check before we can pull the head. The second item we need to check before we go any further is the camshaft bushing. And Honda gives us a dimension on the bushing of 787 thousandths and six tenths to 788 thousandths and four tenths with a wear limit of 789. So let's see what we get here. I'm getting 787 thousandths and six tenths. That places us right at the lower limit of the standard, which is great. We're going to use this. Now let's get back to the head. With the head cover off, let's get the spark plug out of there. Get the carburetor insulator out of here. And we're going to get this cam chain tensioner bolt out of here. There's a long bolt here we have to get out. The whole cylinder is going to try to come up with this one, I see. All right, well, we can, we can handle that. Might have to separate it on the bench. There we go. And now we have a good look at the piston down in there, the cylinder, which is gonna be able to come off in the next video. But here we are, we have the head off completely. We can see there's a lot of cleanup to be done before we can do any inspection on this or even break it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this a little bit in the parts wash tank. Then we'll break the valves down. And we'll let this soak in here for a few hours. 
Head cleaned up nicely and we're now gonna check to make sure that this surface is flat. I'm gonna show you three different ways of doing this. The first is, this is a precision granite table, it's been calibrated and um, it's, it's very, very flat. This is the flattest surface in my shop. It's even better than the granite table you see in the background. But um, I'm just simply seeing if there's any rock whatsoever on the head. And that gives me a pretty good idea that this is not warped. But let's check out two other ways to test and the other ways are a little bit more precise. In the book, Honda gives you the example of using feeler gauges and a straight edge of some kind to test the head. Now I've chosen to use a parallel here, but you could use something else, but it must be perfectly straight. Um, I have precision tools in my shop here that I can use, but a parallel is gonna work just fine in this case. In this instance, I don't see anywhere that you could fit a feeler gauge. And what I, I have a 4,000 feeler gauge selected because I could check with a one, two or three if I thought anything would fit, but I can tell just by looking at this, there's no, there's nothing here going on. This is flat. Um, another thing you could do is take a flashlight, put it behind the parallel or your straight edge and then look to see if you can see any light. If you can see light, attempt to check it with your feeler gauge. Let's show you the last way you can test this. The final way you can test this, and this is the most accurate way to test the head, is to go into a machine shop that has a large granite table like this, and these are very precision surfaces. They're not just, you know, a granite countertop from Lowe's. These are very special instruments. And have them set up the head on parallels, as shown here, and you take a dial test indicator, in this case I'm using a stare at last word, and you set your zero when you come onto the work. I have this set to a zero now. And I'm just checking to make sure that repeats. And then I'm gonna go around the head. And I'm watching the dial to see if the dial test indicator is moving and I'm showing right now about a half thousandths of change from this point as I come through here down to this edge. There's a three thousandths tolerance. A half thousandths is essentially nothing here to worry about. Okay, I'm set up here with a little bit better angle for you. And you can kind of watch the dials. I move my way down the head. And I would just sweep this with the dial test indicator and we would look for changes. So far, we've got nothing. You can see here where we're now at plus one half thousand. So I've gone around the entire head. That's all we show, plus a half thousand. Something to worry about. Now let's break the head down. To break down the valves, you're gonna to need to use a valve spring compressor. There's a variety of types of these tools, but basically what it does is holding the valve there and allowing the compressor to compress the spring enough so that you can get the keepers out. Now, hopefully you can just use a little magnet usually. You see, they come right out. There, I got the other one out. And I'm gonna keep these matched with the valve if we reuse them. And, uh, so keep these set aside. I would I'd put them back on the same valve because there is wear that takes place from the keeper to the valve itself. Now we can release the spring compressor. And when we do that, the spring is gonna be able to come off and we'll break down the intake valve. Take the compressor off. These have double springs. Valve comes out through the bottom. We can examine these. I don't see a lot of pitting, which is good, but there is a quite a sizable ridge here. You can see that I would, um, we're gonna inspect these in just a moment after I power wire brush them. 
but absolutely they're going to get refaced here in my shop or I might buy brand new ones depending on what we find. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other valve. I'm not going to show that process to save time. And a quick check around the spark plug hole and the areas between the spark plug hole and the valve seats, we're checking for cracks. And I don't see anything of concern here. You look down here on the intake side, you might think that that's a crack there. It's not. I checked that. I'm going to clean up the exhaust side a little bit more just to double check for any cracks, but I'm not seeing anything here that worries me today. With everything broken down, let's start checking each component. We're going to go with the intake valve springs first, and then we're going to check the intake valve itself. So Honda gives a tolerance here of 1.79 inches all the way down to 1.61 inches. So you have 180 thousandths tolerance here. Calipers are going to be just fine for this job. In this case, I'm using a nice Swiss made brown and sharp set. So I'm getting 1.75. So right in the middle, that spring passes the test. The inner spring only goes from 1.55 down to 1.40. Again, 150 thousandths tolerance. We got 1.517. We're well within the range. So the intake valve springs pass. One last important thing I'll say about the springs is when you go to put the springs back on, you'll see that the spring itself is wound tighter down here at the bottom than it is at the top. Make sure that this end is down when you reinstall the springs. Very important. The intake valve needs to have the stem measured and Honda gives us a range of 214 and 6 tenths to 215 and 2 tenths. So we don't have a whole lot of range there. The service limit is down to 213 thousandths if it has a lot of wear. Let's see what we're getting now. I'm getting 214 thousandths and three tenths about. And that's what I'm getting along the whole range here. So it does have some wear. It's a little bit below the new tolerance but we're still well above the service limit, which is only 213. And again, I'm getting 214 and maybe four tenths there across this thing. So the stem is fine. I am concerned about the face width. This has a fair amount of a step here that's gonna to have to be cleaned up on the valve resurfacing machine in the next video. And we can't go over 80 thousandths of a valve face width. And what I'm getting right now, and this is pretty tricky to do, but I'm getting over 70 thousandths for sure. You don't want to measure the margin, just the face of the valve. Right now, I'm going to say it's a strong 76 thousandths. So if this takes a lot to clean up and the margin exceeds the service limit, we're going to have to buy new valves. But I'm going to try to grind them first. Okay, let's move on to the exhaust valve and springs. Got 1.76, that's well within the tolerance. 1.523, we're good to go there. Check our valve stem. For the exhaust, we've got 213 thousandths and eight tenths to 214.4. Again, very, very small tolerances here. And I've got right at 213.8 here. Yep, I'm gonna say 213.8. So we're still within the acceptable tolerance. The limit is all the way down to 213 and we've got 213.8. So we are eight tenths above the service limit. But remember, new is 213.8 at the lower side. So it has had somewhere, but it's still within acceptable even for a new, a new one. Again, we're gonna be dealing with the same issue here. Exhaust valves are always worse in the intake. They take more abuse, they're hotter. We're looking for any severe pitting or anything on the stem, which I don't see here. There is some pitting in here, but nothing, I mean, it's so minor. We're gonna say this one will be all right. We're gonna reface this in the next video, and then we're gonna to check to make sure that that critical width on the valve face is not exceeded. 
Now the final checks before we can go ahead and do the valve job in the next video are examining the, the seats here, which have some pitting on both the intake and the exhaust. So we know we're gonna have to regrind the valve seats. But I wanna check the guides and I'm gonna go back to our gauge pins like we used in the last video to test that. The book gives us a tolerance on the guide OD, I mean, I'm sorry, the guide ID of 2.156 to 2.159. That's five and a half, uh, just under five and a half millimeter. And the service limit is five and a half mil millimeter, 0.217. So I'm gonna start with a gauge pin of 0.215. And we're more concerned with the combustion chamber side than we are the rocker side, because most of the wear is happening down here low in the combustion chamber. I can easily get a 215 into, into both of them. Now the intake, I can't, the 216 will barely start, immediately gets tight. The exhaust, 216 goes down a little ways, gets tight probably within a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch max. So I know the 217 limit is not gonna be reached on either one of these. Can't start it on the intake. Can't start it on the exhaust. Just for fun, we'll flip this around. Let's try again with the 216. On the exhaust side, I can barely get it to start, immediately gets tight. Intake side, even 216 won't go. But our 215 goes in easily. So we know that the guides are okay. Now we're gonna check also the stem to guide clearance now, and that'll be the last thing we do before we can go ahead, do the valve job and reassemble this head. And lastly, I'm gonna check the stem to guide clearance, just see if there's a lot of play there. It gives you six thousandths on the exhaust valve, five on the intake. I've got two and a half here, which is well within the tolerance of six. On the exhaust, let's check the intake. I got about one and a half on the intake. So I hope you've been enjoying this series. Get ready for the next video. We're going to do the full valve job and reassemble the head.